Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we uh, we have an agricultural science video for you. Today we're going to be looking at the leaf. Today we're looking at the leaf. We looked at the stem before, and then before that we looked at the root. So we're working our way up the plant now, and so we are still in section B, and we're still looking at the autonomy and physiology of the plant. And so today we're going to continue looking at the leaf. So let's just jump right into it. So the leaf, of course have various functions and some of the functions of the leaf include things like making food through a process called photosynthesis and we'll look at it a little more later on but one of the major functions of the leaf is to carry out the process of photosynthesis by which green plants manufacture their own food so that's photosynthesis the process by which green plants manufacture their own food and then we have the leaf also carrying out what we call respiration and so respiration, the exchange, the site for gases exchange, where the plant would exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen based on the process or vice versa. So respiration is used by the, the respiration is conducted using the leaf in the plant. We can be used to break down the, the results of photosynthesis but also enable the plant to exchange gases with the atmosphere. So respiration, in a sense, you can say is how the plant also breathes, right? The plant takes in a gas, give off the next gas. Depending on the procedure, you might be taking oxygen, give off carbon dioxide, or taking carbon dioxide and give off oxygen, whether it is, whether it is photosynthesis or respiration. And of course, the leaf is used to store food for some plants. So some plants use the leaf, the, especially the green plants, they use their leaf to store food after the leaf would have manufactured the food through photosynthesis. So it's stored in the leaf until it's ready to be sent to the rest parts of the plant. And of course, another, another process that the leaf carries out is what we call transpiration. So transpiration is a process by which the plant would give off some extra water, some excess water, or get rid of water, or lose water, transpiration, to the atmosphere. So the plant would, in some cases, on hot days or whatever, or even during the, the water cycle, the plant would use transpiration to let go of some of the water into the atmosphere. So those are some of the major functions of the leaf, major functions. So one, to carry out the manufacturing of food in photosynthesis, two, for respiration, and three, transpiration, and also four, it is used to store food. So those are some of the major functions of the leaf. Now, the way the leaf looks. Now, there are different types of leaves, of course. You have the simple leaf and you have a compound leaf. Now, what is a simple leaf? What is a compound leaf? Now, a simple leaf would be a leaf that has just one leaf blade or lamina. So before we get into that, let's look at the, the, the parts of the leaf. So a typical leaf consists of a leaf blade or a lamina, which is the flat part, the leaf stalk or the petiole, which attaches the leaf to the stem, the midrib or the main vein that holds uh, the transporting tissues, and a network of smaller veins. So those are some of the main parts of the leaf. And of course, the tip of the leaf is called the apex, and the edges of the leaf are referred to as the margin. So those are some of the parts of the leaf that we have here. So we can see right here, parts of the leaf, you have the midrib that runs straight through the leaf. Then you have the lamina or the leaf blade. That's the whole flat part here. Then you have various veins. Then you have the leaf stalk or the petiole that holds it, that attaches the leaf to the plant. So all these are parts of the leaf that we can see and draw. And we have to be able to be familiarize ourselves with these parts of the basic leaf. So the leaf can be divided into groups. You have your simple leaf and you have your compound leaf. So let's, these are other, the labeled structure of the function, the simple leaf we have here again. As you can see, the midrib running straight to the leaf. The tip is the apex. Then you have the veins. Then you have the entire thing here they call the lamina or the leaf blade. You have the leaf axle and you have the petiole or the stack. So all these are the external parts of the leaf. Now, as I said before, you have different types of leaves. You have a leaf can either be compound or simple. Compound or simple. A simple leaf has only one leaf blade or lamina. That's a simple leaf. 
whereas a compound leaf has two or more leaf blades or lamina as you can see here all these are the leaf system for various plants but these leaf systems contain different leaflets right so this is a leaf system the entire thing but within the leaf system you have different leaflets you have different um, multiple laminas multiple leaf blades so that's what differentiates a simple leaf with just one from a compound leaf with multiple lamina or leaf blades as you can see right here right so those are the two main types of leaves simple leaf or the compound leaf but even within that you have the monocot leaf and the dicot leaf and they are different right this is a simple dicot leaf right here very simple the laminar leaf with everything look at the veins one of the key things is the vein structure of the monocot versus the dicot where as you can see the monocot has these parallel veins right the monocot has these parallel veins but the dicot would have a, a vein system that goes all over like the veins on humans you know goes all over so the monocot leaf parallel veins whereas the dicot has a network of leaf veins so that's one way you can differentiate between a monocot and a dicot just by the leaf alone most monocotyledonous plants would be like grasses and you know most grasses have this pointy leaf system where you have the parallel veins whereas the dicot would be the simpler compound but the vein system is a lot different the network of veins is a lot different than the monocot so those are some of the key aspects of the external parts of the leaf so we looked at the we looked at the function of the leaf we looked at the diagram depicting the leaf and we also looked at the types of leaves so here we have other examples of a simple leaf has only one leaf a uh, leaf on the petiole whereas a compound leaf has multiple and we can see this again and we can also look at the parts again midrib main vein running down the center of the leaf it helps hold the leaf so it is facing the sun good the petiole supports the leaf and holds it away from the stem and of course the leaf blade large broad flat surface whose job it is to collect the sunlight so even within the leaf system other parts have various functions so the leaf has its main function but the within the leaf system other parts would have their own function their own jobs to carry out and so we have as i was describing before the vein patterns for the monocots parallel veins never cross found in monocots and then we have the dicot leaf system the vein system where it is netted veins form a network and the network meaning they run all over the surface of within the leaf as opposed to parallel that never meets so those are the major parts of the external part of the leaf but now we're going to look at some internal structure and tissues of the leaf so the internal structure of the leaf let's start from the outside and work our way in you have of course the cuticle what is the cuticle the cuticle is a waxy waterproof layer that you find outside of the on the leaf a waxy waterproof layer and its job of course is to keep water in the plant so it, that's why it's waterproof and it's waxy to try to regulate the water content of the leaf of the plant waxy waterproof layer of the leaf and that is called the cuticle we have other tissues within the leaf such as the stomata or the stoma singular plural yeah the stomata so what are, what is the stomata now if you look at this this picture showing the leaf under a microscope we can see certain certain f features one of which is this right right here this right here that's a hole within a pool with uh, on the underside of the leaf and its main job is to carry out gaseous exchange and also to with, with allow water to pass out of the leaf also during transpiration so that's why we call this tomato this tomato are the openings at the bottom side of the leaf that allows for gaseous exchange and also for water to exit the leaf so this stomata is right here but the stomata is just the opening now on the right and left of the stomata we have what we call the guard cells now the guard cells as the name suggests they basically guard the stomata the pores the holes in the leaf and so the guard cells would open and close based on what the plant want them to do so if the plant wants to exchange gases of course you open allow the gas exchange and then it closes to cut that off 
Also, if the plant want to plant want to release some water, you may be on a hot day, whatever. The guard cell will open up, allow the water to exit. Even during the water cycle, you can see where the plant comes into play because the plant allows for the release of excess water via the leaves in the process called transpiration. And so the guard cells flanks the, the, the stomata, see the hole here, and the two guard cells on either side, and they open and close, allowing substances in or out of the leaf. Then we have what we call the mesophyll layer of the leaf. The mesophyll layer of the leaf. And the mesophyll layer has two, two layers. You have the palacid mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll. So let's look at what the textbook says about both layers of the leaf. So you have the mesophyll. Tissues between the upper and lower epidermis called cells contain chloroplasts divided into two. So before we continue, the epidermis. I, 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 it's, it's ubiquitous among the plant, it's from head to toe on the plant. What is the epidermis? So the epidermis would be right here. The upper and the lower epidermis would be the, the layers of the, plant, of the leaf. So we have the upper epidermis, a single layer of cells covering the upper surface. The layer covered by a waxy waterproof substance, I mean a tissue called a cuticle, as we looked at earlier. And then you have the lower epidermis, a single layer of cell covering the lower surface contains more stomata than the upper epidermis. And so the job of the epidermis, just like for humans, where we have our skin, it is used to protect the internal tissue. So the job of the epidermis is to protect the internal tissue. And so we understand what the epidermis is though. It's basically the skin of the plant. So its job is to protect the internal tissues of the plant, the epidermis. And so we're back here at the mesophyll now. So the mesophyll, as I said, we have the spongy, which is here, and we have the palisade mesophyll, which is here. So the spongy is more closer to the surface, and the, the, sorry, the, the palisade is closer to the surface, and the spongy is, is below, and it contains a lot of air space, more air spaces than the palisade. Now, what are the functions of each layer? Now, the palisade mesophyll, the upper part of the leaf, can be one of three layers thick contains large amounts of chloroplasts. So when you don't want to see a large amount of chloroplasts, we know what's going on here. Its main job is to help the plant to carry out photosynthesis. The chloroplasts in the mesophyll cells contain chlorophyll, which absorb light energy needed for photosynthesis. And so most photosynthesis takes place in the palacid layer, the palacid mesophyll of the plant. Most photosynthesis occurs in the palacid mesophyll Air spaces in the spongy mesophyll now allow the circulation of gases needed for photosynthesis and respiration. So that's why the, palate, the spongy mesophyll is like this. It has more air spaces to facilitate respiration and also photosynthesis with the gases exchange. So you have the palisade, which is mainly used, it's packed with chlorophyll, right? Packed with the green pigment in the plant, used for trapping the sun energy to help to carry out photosynthesis. And then the spongy mesophyll now contains more air spaces that allows for the gases to be exchanged for respiration and photosynthesis. All right, so those are the, pal the palacid and the spongy mesophyll. So those are the mesophyll layers of the leaf. And so the palacid is the primary site for photosynthesis, and the spongy contains air and chloroplasts and the site of photosynthesis and gas exchange also. And also it is used to store the food that is made from the, the, the from photosynthesis that would have been in the palisade mesophyll, it filters down into the spongy mesophyll where it is stored also. Then of course, within the leaf, we have what they call the vascular bundles. I know we would have looked at this earlier in the stem because the stem contains vascular bundles also, so does the root. So the vascular bundles run from root to tip, for to, to the top of the plant. And so, of course, we call them the veins in the plant um, leaf, we call them the veins. And so we have, again, the xylem and the phloem. Again, the function remains the same as it was for the stem. The phloem moves food from the leaf to the rest of the plant, and the xylem moves water and minerals up to the leaves from the root. So the xylem runs from the root all the way up to the leaf, so does the phloem. And so their job is to, the xylem, is to carry water from the root all the way up to the leaf. Also water and minerals from the root that it would have absorbed. 
And then we have the, the phloem, which moves the food that was created during photosynthesis and takes it to the rest of the plant. So those are some key tissues in the plant, right? In the leaf, specifically. And so you have this diagram here depicting the tissues in the leaf. So you have the ep upper epidermis, spongy mesophyll. You have the lower epidermis, right? And so those are the internal structures of the leaf. So you have the cuticle at the top here, the waxy waterproof layer. Then you have the upper epidermis. Then you have the palacid mesophyll, where a lot of most of the photosynthesis takes place. And the upper, upper epidermis is with, the epidermis in general, its job is to protect the internal part of the plant, the leaf. And then you have the spongy mesophyll that contains air spaces with water vapor to help with the gases exchange. And then we have the guard cells here and the stoma or the stomata that allows for gases exchange also and water to be removed from the plant. And so these are the internals of the leaf, the internal structure of the leaf. So we looked at the external structure of the leaf, we looked at the internal structure of the leaf. And so that's basically it as it relates to the anatomy and the physiology of the leaf, the plant leaf. We looked at the internal and the external. We looked at the types of leaf, which is, you know, the compound versus the, the, the simple. And of course, we have some examples of leafy crops, leafy vegetables. And we know you have a, a whole lot more. You spinach, you cabbage, you broccoli, you cauliflower, a whole lot more leafy, leafy crops. All right, so that's basically it for the leaf. And so our next video, we're going to be looking at probably we're going to wrap the, the, the fruit and maybe the seed in one video. But we have the flower to look at also. So make sure you stay tuned to learn SKN so you know when we start looking at the other parts of the plant. And so we're almost out of the anatomy section of the, of the syllabus. So we looked at the stem already, the root already, the leaves already. So we have the flower to look at and the fruit to look at. But we're going to look at the flower when we're looking at the sexual reproduction in the plant, the leaf, in the plant in general. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And of course, you know what to do. Subscribe, like the button, kick the like button, everything, all the good stuff, right? So you know that when learners can drop the next video.